Hello, this is my second video of the 11th day. However, it's not officially the 11th day. It is 1240, almost one o'clock the following morning. I worked last night at my job at the factory and uh, I prayed all night for my niece by marriage now who's divorced from my nephew and her mama is in the hospital with COVID related pneumonia. She wasn't doing really well. She had cardiac arrest and then she did, she rallied and she did real well and uh, things were good. And then she took a turn for the worst again. She got CO uh, gases in her blood they didn't know what to do, and so they were thinking of uh, putting her on a ventilator. So last night I prayed every chance I got. And then today I stayed up. I got my COVID booster shot. It's the Pfizer, what I got before I got the Pfizer one and two. And I got them from a uh, hospital here in the uh, metropolitan area of Minnesota. Um, well, it's a metropolitan area of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. But anyway, I, uh, I, I stayed up all day to try to uh, pray and uh, make sure I could sleep tonight. I finally started to veg out around 5.30 after I ate. I ate, tried to eat one or two meals a day or at least eat them in uh, windows so I have some intermittent fasting. It works best for me. I also am reading the Jim Quick book called Limitless, which is the guide on how to increase and work on my uh, memory, um, but mainly reading and spelling because I am was uh, diagnosed as a dyslexic in my 30s. I did not learn to read and write until I was about 30 years old. I could struggle and kind of read maybe at a first or second grade level up until then, even when I was in college in my uh, early early 20s. But uh, anyway, I have to tackle these things that are bothering me. And the things that are bothering me are uh, or hold me back, actually, I should say, which is spelling and reading. I, but also I want to state that uh, life is messy. Life is difficult. And uh, Jim Quick, in his book Limitless, I'm listening to the audio book, and I think I'm going to buy a regular hard copy uh, today or soon, but uh, Jim Quick just talks about that which you avoid at the other end of it is life-changing uh, knowledge if you work through it. Uh, I can't think of his exact quote because I just got up and I need to go back to sleep. But I'm making this video because I promised myself that I would try to make two a day. But also because I just felt a heaviness on my heart to pray for Stephanie, uh, my niece. And uh, I don't know if I should use her name. Anyway, she's a sweetheart and her mama. And like I said, life is messy. But uh, I sent out texts to all friends and relatives to please pray for my niece and my niece's mom. And I just had an urge to get up now and pray for her, think of her, and just hope that hope for the best. Hope that we can all learn to be kinder people and that we can help each other and uh, encourage each other because uh, I've been so ignorant in the past 
and so selfish and narcissistic. And sometimes when these things happen to other people, I almost wish that they could happen to me and then they wouldn't have to go through it. It seems so unfair sometimes, but ultimately this is years and years and years of living a certain way. And we all don't know. There's no owner's manual. And so that's why I'm making these videos to just document and uh, to let everyone know why I'm working as hard as I am now at 66 years old to uh, improve things and work on things that I should have done in my 20s. Uh, Simon Sinek, another author, says that uh, people don't follow you because of uh, what you do. They follow you why you're doing it. <laughs> they follow your why. And uh, all of this really makes, it may seem like Gary Vanderchuk's book, book, 12 and a Half Steps, doesn't really apply. But it sure does. Because I am grateful and I am empathetic. Uh, and I'm trying to be optimistic. Oh, but I don't know how to help. And I don't want to keep texting my niece or bothering her or asking, how is everything yet? How is everything? How is everything? I just want to be there for her. And I hope that other members of the family aren't going to be hard on her. Uh, She, my niece, since she has known us, she lost her stepfather and she lost us in a divorce. Well, she didn't lose us, but she's going through a lot of pain and difficulty because of our family. And I feel bad because I used to go and see her and notice that she was bothered. Something was hurting her. And I tried to come up to her and hug her and say that I love her and that things will be okay. I don't know what's going on, but I don't know. I just, I didn't, I wish I would have been more open and kind and, and, been on her side a little bit more. Uh, I don't know. <sighs> I just wish I could have helped her or let her know. But I, I, I recently, I, I connected with her uh, last Christmas. I gave her a little Christmas gift. I gave my younger sister some Christmas gifts and my mom and my older sister and then my uh, new niece by marriage that's now married to my nephew, the one that, uh, anyway. And then, of course, my biological niece. And anyway, my nephew found out about the little Christmas gift and he got in an argument. Ugh. Anyway, my sister told me not to have anything to do with my niece. And so I kind of laid low, but eventually I connected with everybody again and uh, sent them all birthday presents and tried to let everybody know that I love everybody. You know, you got two, I don't have kids, but I have friends and I have nieces and nephews and I have brothers and sisters and when people are arguing and fighting, you don't stop loving one over the other. Even if you do have to take sides because one is beating one up more than the other. But you still love them. And you still want them to kind of learn the lesson and to get through it. And that's what you don't realize. I don't realize. I didn't realize is the people that you argue with are actually an opportunity for you to grow. <laughs> they're, the, they're the reason 
That's the reason you're having an argument is because you see what you don't like in yourself. And they won't see it. And, and you don't see it because you're both emotionally charged. And anyway, I don't know. I don't know how to help. And I just have a heavy heart. So that's what I'm trying to, to do right now personally. And I thought I'd just get on the uh, YouTube and uh, let you know what I'm struggling with and why I'm working so hard at uh, sharing sharing and uh, this journey and uh, sharing the knowledge that I'm learning. And uh, it's a much better life to strive toward learning and improvement and uh, becoming limitless by reading Jim Quick's book and uh, Gary Vanderchuk's book. And I have to be Honest, I thought about this the other day. Gary Vanderchuk is maybe in his 40s. Jim Quick is maybe in his 40s. I'm guessing. I have no idea. Maybe it's more to, close to 50. I'm 66 years old. And I went through these challenges. Uh, and I've made these... Uh, I've wanted to uh, be positive like these people and I wanted to do these things and I did for a time but then I got lazy and sat on the couch and and didn't do the work and now these young men are coming out and doing it and I'm using them like fathers and like uh, teachers when I should have I should have been the one that's actually helping them and teaching them. But it's never too late to, to take the bull by the horns. But I know these things to be true. Just like if you're out there watching this years from now or now, uh, you know when people are bullshitting you or not bullshitting you. And you know when the advice is worthwhile. And sometimes you get advice and information that are completely opposing thoughts. That's okay. It's okay to hold two opposing thoughts in your head. Life is messy. If you've got brothers, if you've got sisters, if you've got husbands, children, you will lay down your life for them. You love them so much. And then the next minute, you want to kill them. You would, you would just... Because we're selfish, because we're hurting with it. Why can't they know that? But ultimately you don't. But that strong emotion both ways is still just emotion. The opposite of love, I heard, is not hate. It's an emotion. Those are strong emotions. They're horns on the same bull. The opposite of love is indifference. And indifference and ignorance are the almost, almost the worst evil on the planet. Because you, we're all connected. You would never think of cutting off your own hand. If we were born without any kind of pain receptors, we might do terrible things to our body. But since we have pain receptors that make us think, oh no, this is my hand. This is, uh, it's like kids who get work on the dentist. They make sure that they don't eat and also don't chew on your own tongue and, and stuff like that, even though it doesn't hurt because eventually your, your feelings gonna come back and then you're gonna be in pain. So, but unfortunately we don't have the feelings of other people where we do have an ability to be empathetic. Some of us don't. Some of us are more along of a sociopath or a psychopath. And, some, and those people are usually shunned. Uh, there are some people who are borderline. 
who just don't understand how other people feel. They don't, that part of their brain isn't lit up, but they're not negative about it. They're not, uh, oh, there's some stories about some people who were picked on in their life because they just didn't get it. And then, and then somewhere along the line, their brain woke up and it's like, oh, there's a whole, there's a whole emotion here of, of I can be empathetic and sympathize with someone. And that's what uh, uh, psychopaths and sociopaths are, they actually struggle with that. And so out of ignorance, they just only think of themselves and don't really think of the consequences or the pain that they hurt other people. Anyway, I'm learning all these things, but I, I'm learning them because I want to just be a better man. I'm tired of being, uh, I don't know, just making the easy choices and uh, having a hard life. I now want to make the hard choices and have an easier life, as Jaco Willink says, as Tom Quick says, as Jim, uh, as as Jim Quick says, as Tom Bilyeu says, oh man, I can't speak. And as Gary Banderchuk says in his book and in his other books and in his talks about being self-aware. Anyway, this was the impetus for empath this was the impetus for me to finally get a channel up. And once I edit these things will become more interesting and uh, maybe people will find it, maybe you will find it useful. But anyway, I don't know what to do. I, so I'm gonna sign off now and uh, I'm going to uh, just pray, meditate, and uh, hopefully the infinite, the uh, divine, can uh, help me to put my mind and my heart and my emotions in its direction, in, in uh, awareness's direction, in the divine's direction, in God, if you want to call it God's direction, if uh, just in, in the direction of of wholeness and uh, kindness and uh, wisdom. Anyway, that's it. Bob out.